Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online PTS test video with me, Sherman. Today guys, I'm just going to be going over what I've been testing on the, the PTS with um, within the last 24 hours since I did my last upload. Pretty much I've just been testing some new bard setups and uh, monk setups because it looks like that's what I'll be working on. Uh, when the, the the servers go live or when the scale breaker goes live is what I'll be releasing is those things um, and depending on how the patch notes go again um, that plays a lot into how I'm gonna do my builds and how builds are gonna be released um, pretty much I will release builds based on um, how the patch notes go so depending on how the patch notes go this next week and the following week um, I could be releasing builds next week, not this coming week, but the following week. Um, and if I do, I'm going to go right into doing bards and, um, uh, monks like I planned on, uh, before this. So expect to see those coming out pretty soon. On top of that, I am also working on some guide stuff for, uh, one bar play. For those people who have been asking for that, um, I did do some testing with one bar play stuff and I didn't really see much of a loss uh, in some of the some of the options. I did have to change some skills around to get uh, better option or better damage options uh, for certain things, but not enough to really warrant a lot of problems. So it, it just depends on the class, it depends on the setup. And depends on the skills so I'm seeing about a 1 to 2k loss in DPS in some of those again um, just depends on the class and it depends on the, the build structure so I should be getting those started next week doing the guides on that and that depends on changes as well if there's a not a lot if there's a lot of changes or not a lot of changes this patch coming up Monday I will wait until next week and see what next week's patch is like before I start again releasing builds and um, one bar guides so I want to see what's happening on the PTS before we get any any of this stuff going so just so you guys can see this is one of the um, things that I'm working on this is a Dragon Knight monk character I did use the Dark Elf because the Dark Elf to me worked uh, seemed to work the best uh, the, the Khajiit works really good with this as well. The other races do work good with the monk designs in some... Like, they, it just depends on the design of the monk and how it plays. So, some of the monk designs are more geared towards being well-rounded. So it's going to be like the races that work best are going to be the ones that are well-rounded. Um, so like the, the Dark Elf and the Khajiit work really good in those, in those um, areas, along with, surprisingly enough, the Imperial um, can play monks really well because of their passives. Um, but all the other races do play well. Uh, actually, uh, Argonian is another one that surprisingly worked out well because they have that extra healing capability. And monks do have a little bit of everything. They have damage, they have support, and they have healing built into them. So you, you kind of can take a bunch of different options in, into a monk play style and take it into a group dynamic and offer a lot of different um, versatility in your, in your, play, in your playability. The other thing that I am uh, seeing a little bit was I did see a, a loss, a little bit of loss in the, in the DPS kind of setup, but not a lot um, from what I tested prior to this. Again, this with this I'm seeing a, a gain in DPS versus the, um, the when I tested it before, so which is really good. But there was a few classes where I saw a few losses in DPS. No, it was not the Sork. Actually, the Sork gained a little bit. Um, primarily because the Sork as a monk uh, works a lot different than you think. So, but it worked out really well uh, when I was testing it. So, I'm, I'm not going to mess that with that one too much. I'm going to be altering a little bit about the Warden monk and the uh, Nightblade Monk. So those are the two that I, I had some 
I wouldn't say major discrepancies, but I, I didn't like how they were working out, so I'm going to alter them and make them work better um, with just some, some slight gear set alterations. So, But yeah, other than that, I'm not seeing much of a difference in how they, they play along with the bard stuff. The bard stuff, I am trying some new ways of setting up the bards um, to bring make them a little bit more support orientated and and not as much uh, damage orientated. I want them to be more support, like group support orientated characters because with the changes that are coming and the things that the devs said, it sounds like they, they kind of want us to do this kind of thing where we bring dynamics to the group um, and, and we don't have these uh, like a standardized group kind of, of like what I said about the meta being um, taking a, or, or creating a group dynamic that's really restricted I think the devs don't want that um, because of the way I see the, the changes happening so I think they're going from they want more group diversity in the build structure so I'm kind of altering to that kind of play style uh, to see how things go and see how this stuff fits within the game but a lot of it is group dynamics is a very big part of any uh, role-playing game because you you want to have a good group dynamic in order to do to, to play the, the, the stories or to play the the, the dungeons or the, to play these these um, trials with and also in PvP having a good group dynamic helps a lot because it allows you to have a versatile uh, play style with your characters and a lot of times people don't realize how versatile a group can be when you have a dynamic group so um but yeah that's what I'm seeing uh, or that's what I've been testing and also seeing a lot of with the changes. I, I Again, I do want to see the patch notes before I start releasing anything. The main reason why is because if the patch notes or the patch stays 90% as is, um, it won't be that bad for me to release stuff. It's it's when we get the major, major changes and stuff in, in things. So... Yes, thank you for letting me know about that um, uh, thing for whatever. <laughs> so, going on um, from there, I mean, I, I'm just going to be testing builds pretty much from here on out and seeing how things are going to work with the new changes and things like that and, and pretty much just work on my build ideas for the rest of the, the duration of the PTS and I just kind of like want to keep you guys in the loop about what I'm doing how I'm doing things how I'm researching different skills and skill allocations for different build structures as you can see this one is a is a hybrid type um, magic of stamina uh, kind of DPS when they play damage dealer but when they play support a lot of this stuff changes to more group orientated stuff and it winds up working out really well <clears throat> There's uh, several different options I've been trying in skills on the back bar. Like I did Structured Entropy um, in exchange for Volcanic Ruin. I also did try the the World Skill Soul Magic, uh, splitting, uh, Soul Splitting Trap, and a few other things to, to see the dynamics of this character build and how you can play them with different skills. Now you gotta remember, if you're playing this character as a healer, it's primarily or a support character like heal support you're going to be right up there with the group so it's good to take a defensive buff with you the one that i tested the most with this was the mages guild um balance and this gives you the major ward major resolve but it does affect your healing um for four seconds so that kind of can hurt your character but i did try it out again like i said i was trying out a lot of different options when it came to that, um, but I like the long the long duration of the spell and physical resist, so I, I did like it for that aspect, and it really allowed me to um, dive deep into how the character plays in the healing aspects, and then also into group support, because even though I look like I might be a, 
a damage dealer, I can also bring a lot of group support abilities through heals, um, CC, crowd control, things like that. And that's pretty much the idea of bards and monks, is they are support type characters. Bards are more geared towards support than monks are. Monks are more geared towards like damage and healing, where bards are, are geared more towards like group support bringing um, abilities that help the group in supportive kind of ways and along with their sets as well uh, compared to the monks. The monks are pretty much designed to work one way, bards another, and it's the same thing with, with the druids and um, shamans, uh, priests and clerics. They all work in, in different ways, but in similar fashions. Like a priest and clerics, the difference between the two is a priest is more of a, a group healer along with damage. And then you have the, the cleric who's more damage with support and healing, a little, you know, healing added on. So it's kind of like a, they're, they're more support and dam, uh, sorry, support and healing than they are damage um, on the cleric. But they can be damage based when you're playing them in the overland, that kind of stuff. And that's that's pretty much what I'm looking at is how the characters will play in all the different environments. Not just um, overland PvE, delves, public dungeons, but also dungeons, trials, um, battlegrounds, and Cyrodiil as well. Because I know a lot of people want you know to be able to play those builds there as well i'm not going to release pvp builds themselves i will re release guides showing how to convert the builds into pvp and how you can set them up for pvp and that's pretty much what i'll do i'm not going to release a bunch of pvp builds pve builds and things like that i'm just going to release my builds as a standard with it with like a standardized setup kind of thing and then you can adjust it to your own play style uh, that's the way the builds are made. Is is they're made to be versatile to the player's choosing. So that's the reason. Another reason why I lock unlock a lot of skills is because if there's certain skills that I use that you don't like, you can use other skills that I do have unlocked, or you can choose other morphs. And it's really up to the player to decide that. So please understand that most of my builds are not meta builds. These are non-meta um, builds. They use some meta skill format, but they're primarily, uh, you know, made to work a certain way within a certain dynamic or in, in a way that works within group dynamics that allows for versatility. So every character I release has the ability to play support, damage, healer, um, and tank. But they will be designed to work one way or another like this the 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 dragon monk is is going to be more damage orientated more of a damage role character but they're going to have the ability to bring support and healing to the group if necessary they can also play tanks they're not super effective tanks but they can do it um again it really comes down to the build structure and, and that's the other thing um, that I did want to talk about. I am going to do guides also on how I create each of the um, classifications that I do. So like bards, monks, knights, um, fighters, barbarians. I'm going to do all that stuff and I'm going to show you guys how I create them using the tools in the game. So like if I show you how to create, like this is one of my barbarians... Or this is how I create barbar a barbarian build. Um, I use these sets in combination to give me this kind of uh, capability to play the character. And then I use these traits, Munda Stones, that kind of stuff. And that's what I'm going to do when it comes to the guides of how I, how I do builds. So this way you guys can come up with your own ideas on how you want to create your own unique character or... Um, build in that design yourself so you're not just you know going in and looking at all the videos i do you can see for yourselves the different set combinations and how i use them and then you can decide amongst that like pool of sets which ones you want to use and how you want to create the character you want to play so that's that's the general idea okay um but yeah i do have a lot of plans again 
for how I want to do things. I'm working right now also on um, doing my scripts for um, the different types of guides and the different types of builds I'm going to be releasing um, along with other things because I, I am going to start doing more scripting in my in my videos but not to the extent that you think I'm not going to be like the whole thing is going to be scripted I'm still going to use my talking point script system because it works really good for me personally so I'm going to stick to that and I'm going to continue releasing stuff in that way I am also working with this um, recording software more and I will be doing some of my stuff with that recording, using that recording software when I do guides mostly. Because guides, there's going to be a multitude of different things that I'm going to be showing. So I'm going to have to edit a lot of stuff in and out of there. So you guys can see the, the different options of gear sets and, and different tools and, and different things like that. So you can go through and pick and choose uh, at your own, like I said, at your own play styles so but that's pretty much what I got going on right now um, other than that I'm, I'm just doing a lot of testing on the PTS I'm spending half my day right now on PTS uh, here in about 15 minutes I'm gonna log off PTS I'm gonna go do lunch I'm gonna go do some normal real-life stuff and then I'm gonna come back around 3 o'clock get on play the game for about an hour and a half or so and then log for the evening to, to, to hang out with the family, do that stuff, and then come back again later tonight. I did get on last night um, for about five hours on the game and actually uh, finished up all of Elsewhere with my main character. So I finished, uh, I had already finished the main story, I finished all the side quests, um, all the, the world bosses, uh, killed a bunch of dragons along the way, uh, did all the delves, public dungeons, uh, got all the sky shards. I, I pretty much cleared the the elsewhere stuff, out, uh, you know, out um, on my main character. It was a lot of fun, and and I have to say it was probably some of the most well written story aspects I've seen in the game in a long time. Um, I really like how they did a lot of the story and how they in incorporated it into the game because you got to remember there's a lot of things that have happened in the, the the base games of Elder Scrolls. So Elder Scrolls like Morrowind, Daggerfall, all that kind of stuff that this doesn't reference, uh, isn't ref referenced to. So I'm guessing that maybe some of the lore and history that happened with this like with our characters, you know, being the champions of elsewhere and, and things like that. I'm sure it's it's going to be incorporated somehow into the lore, but I don't know. But I do think that the, the whole premise with the dragons and, and the stuff that goes on with them, how you, you wind up going to... Uh, I, can't expl I can't go into details because a lot of people haven't completed the main story, but I really loved how they put it together, and it was a lot of fun, so... But that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, that's what I got going on. And I'm going to be spending, like I said, a pr probably like a mix between half and half on PTS and on live. Mainly so I can start working on my live characters and getting them situated to the play styles I want to play them with. And the different um, like builds that I'm going to be using with them. And, and doing that over the next several weeks so I can get my characters adjusted for the changes coming to Scalebreaker and also just work on getting them through this different content because I'm still like I, I play through all the content with my characters um, because I like the game that much and, and no I'm not going to be doing the stuff just so you guys know I probably won't be doing the um, skill lines here that you can purchase I do think that the way that they're doing it is is again in the gray area and I do want to bring this up because a lot of people have been asking me about this I think this is a gray area and the reason I say it's a gray area is because if you can purchase the skill lines after you come now now the way it works is you have to complete unlocking the skill line completely so like if you don't have all of the Alliance War skill line maxed out on a character you cannot unlock it with any other character. The same thing goes with Dark Brotherhood, Finder's Guild, Ledgerman, Mage's Guild, uh, Thieves Guild, Undaunted, and the Werewolf, of course, and, and Vampire are still there. But 
all the other skill lines, you have to play through them 100% and have 100% com completion of them in order to unlock them with other characters. Now, new players coming in the game won't have access to do that, so it's gonna, and this is where that gray area lies for me. New players aren't gonna be able to purchase the skill lines like um, veteran players. Veteran players will be able to t buy those skill lines and use them on their level, low level characters, depending on how much these things cost on the live server. Um, it can cause a lot of problems. Now, I will agree with Alcast on something here. I do think that the skill un line unlock should be at level 50. Like, you should have to be at level 50 with your characters to unlock them no matter what. That puts it in a good balance for the game because this means the people, the veteran players, still have to play to fit level 50 to unlock the skill lines if they want to that way, or they can unlock them as they progress through the game like normal. They get that option. If you allow people to, pur to purchase the skill lines right out the door, they will do that, and they will take advantage of that against the new coming players, and this can hurt the new player experience of them coming into the game. So that's where I agree with Outcast is that can really mess with that. The gray area, again, what I call the gray area is this is really on the tipping point of pay to win because it's allowing players to pay for skill lines and com and it's not 100% com complete skill lines. They can unlock this skill line and they get every skill unlocked as far as I know, but they still have to level and progress those skills. Um, that's something that I heard is what you have to do. I'm not 100%. I haven't tested it yet. I'm going to get on um, here later tomorrow probably and test that. Just see. Uh, so I can bring you more definitive news on that. But I do want to cover this because I do think it's important that the community understands how it works, how it's going to reflect our gameplay, how it's going to reflect not only the, the new player experience, but also the veteran player experience. Because this can this is a gray area of pay to win and nothing against the devs i know why they're doing it because a lot of people and i i agree so unlocking some of these skill lines can be ridiculous like even if it's the dark brotherhood because you have to play through like a bunch of of, of assassination stuff to unlock the whole skill line the same thing for the thieves guild and ledgerman these things can take a long time to to unlock but so does the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, and the Alliance War. All these things can take a long time to unlock on your character. If you have 18 characters that you're trying to unlock all these different skill lines on, it's going to take you months, if not a year or more, to do that with every character you have access to. Because you have to play that character through a lot of different content to unlock every skill line. Now, I don't mind spending my time doing that because that gives me something to look forward to with my characters is progressing them. So I don't mind that. But when people can buy access to it because they've done it with one character and they can do it with all their, they can purchase access with all their other characters, again, that's that gray area. And that's why I agree that it needs to be, there needs to be a, a restriction in here at level 50. At least level 50. Um in order to purchase the skill lines. The reason I say that is because that way it doesn't hurt the new player experience. The new players can still play the game, progress through the game, progress through the different content, and not have a bunch of people running around with ubered out characters, especially the Undaunted line, where they get 6% max stats. So if they play through the game level 1 to 50 and they do the Undaunted stuff level 1 to 50, like everyone else, then you can have Undaunted Unlocked before you hit level 50. So anyone can do that. Um, the Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, and Dark Brotherhood, all those other ones, those ones take a long time. So I can understand the, the Ledgerman one, um, Dark Brotherhood, and Thieves Guild, because they're not going to hurt the game too much, as much as the Mages, Fighters Guild, and Undaunted. And what I mean by hurt the game... I mean, hurt the play, player base community with be, between the veteran and new players. So, um, but yeah, I, I could go on about this. I'm not going to. That's my that's my opinion on it. That's how I feel about it. 
and you can agree or disagree. That's that's really up to you. But like I said, I, I do think that there needs to be a restriction on it. Other than that, that's all I've got going on right now on the PTS and everything. So I hope you guys are uh, liking the content right now. I know it hasn't been builds and stuff. Um, and I haven't been really showing you guys a lot of the build structures I'm working on. And that's because I really want to just wait until I release the build. So you guys can see more of how that stuff works when the full build is is done. And, and the changes are, are done with the PTS. So... Um, I am going to continue doing a few other videos throughout the PTS cycle. Not like this. I am going to show a few uh, things, like if they do any changes, I'll, I'll talk about the changes. I'll talk about the different things when it comes to that. Um, I am going to be showing some of the new gear sets next week and, and showing uh, them in combination with other sets and how they can work, and, along with the monster sets and everything. And just kind of just doing that in, in my own way and letting you guys see that. So... But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, you guys know what's coming next. Go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.